Look, I'm sweating here. My legs are bruised from like pounding my legs the entire second half. Um, what a game. I don't know if I've been more happy other than 2021 at a Michigan football game against Ohio State, at least obviously outside the national championship game, outside of that Alabama win in the Rose Bowl. But holy cow, um, just so many plays made by Michigan when they absolutely had to be made. I mean, just in the fourth quarter on that last drive, um, you had Davis Warren rolling out of nowhere and hitting, um, who was it, Peyton O'Leary for 18 yards, grabbing the ball right off the, uh, off the turf. You had um, Warren on a run himself, right back to back to plays with the run, and then it was the pass. Um, as I'm wiping my face, I'm literally sweating, right? I'm sweating from profusely from my hair, my hat, um, under the shirt, just disaster. I got the natty shirt on, so it's all good. I switched it up this year, right? The uh, the usual um, coach's game day t-shirt and this hat, they weren't cutting anymore. It's a new generation. Um, and even Michigan pull off the greatest, maybe the greatest upset in this history, at least point spread wise, right? Um, I don't know what the point spread was in 1969, but this is a bigger point spread than 1995. This is a bigger point spread than 1996. Speaking of 96, I tweeted out last night and I don't know if I was, you know, uh, I was a prophet or just was being a smart ass, but I tweeted last night, feels like 96. Remember 1996, you had Brian Greasy, a walk-on quarterback going to Ohio. Um, you had Ohio State, a juggernaut, number one, number two in the country, uh, undefeated, and Michigan having a down year uh, in the second season, second game, head coaching for Lloyd Carr, right? Coach in 95, coach in 96, Sean Moore, coach in 2023, coach in 2024. Um, it just felt like a lot of the same vibes that Michigan was going to absolutely have to do everything perfect. Uh, you know, I guess not really everything perfect, but they were just going to have to uh, just win a, a ball game. And, um, where Ohio, they let Ohio State do nothing and they made just enough plays. That game was 13 to 9. This game goes 13 to 10. And despite Michigan winning and getting this massive win, fourth in a row, uh, undefeated this decade, undefeated since beat Ohio State again, Bosa became a political slogan in January of 2020. Um, that time it was 13 to 9. This time, 13 to 10. That last drive, I mean, it felt a lot like the the game winning score to go up two scores to go forty two to seventeen, uh, forty two to twenty seven in twenty twenty one. That's what it felt like the entire uh, drive. It's like okay, they're going to be stopped, and you're just kind of thinking to yourself, man, Ohio State is going to get the ball back here. Michigan's going to have to punt. Ohio State's going to get the ball back here, and they're going to go down and score a touchdown and win this game. And then Davis Warren gets that run. And then third and long, you get the pass to Peyton O'Leary. And then another thing was third down. You get Clem Long stuff and then breaking it outside, getting inside the 15 or the 10-yard line. And you wanted Michigan to score a touchdown, but, but they didn't. And then you get a little bit of luck because I don't really, I was too excited. I didn't really know what was called or what happened, but Michigan got an extra 10 seconds there at the end because someone's helmet popped off. So they had to you know, reset or realign the uh, the play clock. So instead of getting the ball back with like a minute left, Ohio State got the ball back with like 45 seconds left. And uh, and it was just awesome. Uh, so before I continue on about four minutes into this, this video, uh, just doing it raw dog, doing it from uh, the white you know corner of my bedroom here uh, after watching this game, comment below, what this game means to you. Comment below just your thoughts um, on this game, this season, and uh, and I'll continue on. And if you've never watched still before, make sure you subscribe. Uh, doing the old double read that uh, we don't normally do, but go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So, uh, Will Howard, he, uh, I think, I think we're going to find this out. I'm going to clip this and put it out later when I may be proven right, but I think he was not right after that hit by Makari Page. Um, and that's no excuse for Ohio State, and, and Michigan shouldn't feel bad about getting this victory. But um, I kind of saw it when he came back in the game. You saw this one little clip of the corner of, of the screen where he they threw a ball that was incomplete, and his eyes looked like they were like, like this, like that. I'm like, eh, I don't know if he should be in this game right now. But switching back over to Michigan for a second. Absolute masterclass. Absolute masterclass of a defensive performance. Shout out Wink Martindale. I apologize for calling you stink a couple times during the year. He's had the last three or four weeks a hell of a run as defensive coordinator. And I hope Michigan sticks with him because without Will Johnson, he has been able to put together some of his best performances. And if Michigan gets a few players in the transfer portal, they're going to need him on the defensive line, right? You might get uh, Derek Moore back, TJ Guy, but, um, you know, 
most of the defensive talent on that line, uh, the defensive line talent, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, Josiah Stewart are going to be gone. Got some, you know, got some guys coming back. Ray Sean Benny seemed to have a good game today. But if Michigan can refill that defensive line, keep both linebackers who I think have to come back. I don't think they're getting any, you know, first or second or third round draft uh, grades. You got guys like Zeke Berry. You got all the secondary transfers from last year who stepped up today. Um, gosh, Makari Page, I know he won't be back. I don't think. I mean, I don't maybe there's a COVID year in there, but I don't think he can come back. Um, what plays by him? Interception in the red zone, right? Uh, that big hit on Dave, on on Will Howard that maybe you know knocked Howard around, got some screws loose, or at least made him uh, timid to throw the ball. And uh, and big game by him. But no Will Johnson, no Colson Loveland. So you, maybe your best player on defense, one of the, at least two with Mason Graham, your absolute best player on offense in Colson Loveland. And then Diamond Edwards gets hurt in the second quarter, which seemed like a classless play to me. I don't know if it was just bang, bang, but it sure seemed like uh, Caleb Downs is twisting his leg over like this when another player was on top of him. He never came back in the ball game. Shout out to Sharon Moore. He had a game plan. He didn't, it never felt like the moment was too big for him. He had a couple plays, right? That Alex Orgy run early on in the game. That was, was it the second quarter, maybe the third. I think it was the second quarter. Um, that was a big play, a big call. And I think if it had not gone right, a lot of people like you, like me, would have probably been second guessing him for it. So shout out to that. Another one where you had Orgy under center. And for once, maybe they're setting up all those Orgy runs all year. Were they setting up for the pitch reverse to Kendrick Bell around the right side? throwing downfield, getting the pass interference, right? And I believe that was the, the drive that a couple plays later, Michigan, wide open touchdown was there. And um, I saw our guy Tom Downey on Twitter said, Davis Warren throws it right to Jack Sawyer. Sawyer, uh, not because it was a bad throw, although it was a bad throw, but because you just don't expect a defensive lineman to drop off the line to cover a tight end six, seven, eight yards behind him in the end zone. So I think Davis Warren, I saw the, the tight end. I can't remember who it was at this point. Uh, wide open. I'm like, touchdown, throw it again. Yeah. And I'm like, saw that throw. I was like, oh my God. Four straight wins. Beat Ohio State again. Now, this probably puts Michigan in the better uh, you know tier for bowl games. I'm not sure if that really matters. I'm not sure if we care. But the last 12 days for Michigan, you get Bryce Underwood. Right and the Ellisons and this new NIL era at Michigan happened a week ago Thursday. So twelve days ago for that one, or is it no nine days? I'm sorry, nine days ago. Right, I was thinking twelve to nine days. Okay, two days later you drop fifty on Northwestern. Boom, 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 boom. You beat Ohio State again, thirteen to ten. Just throw out some stats here. I mean, Clem Mullings, what a warrior, what an all-time pro prep program guy. He, uh, a lot of similarities to Hassan Haskins, although Haskins, you know, I think had a little bit better of a career, but Khalil Mullins, what a warrior. Davis Warren, 9 of 16, I mean 62 yards. You just beat Ohio State, the number two team in the country, for the fourth time in a row by throwing 62 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. Tyler Morris, the nice catch. Marlon Klein, Hogan Hansen, three catches for Klein, 13 yards, one for Hansen for nine yards. They seemed like they were big plays at big times in this ball game. Um... Ernest Hausman, eight tackles, led the way for Michigan, one and a half tackles for loss. Um, I don't know if Michigan sacked Ohio State at all. I'm going to look at it here. Um, I don't even know where it is. but um, and Wolverines, 7 of 14 on third down, which is crazy because it didn't seem like they were getting any third downs for a while in this game. They finished 7 of 14. Ohio State, only 6 of 16. So as the game went on, Michigan's fourth down. Ohio State's went down, and that could be the difference of the ball game. Uh, Ohio State, one of two on fourth down, the one they didn't get the last play of the ball game for that team. Michigan, oh, of one on fourth down. That was inside the five yard line when they needed like a yard and a half to get a first down to keep a drive going. But for the 23rd straight time in this series, Michigan wins, or the team that, sorry, Michigan wins this one, but the team that leads in rushing yards wins this ball game. 172 rushing yards for Michigan, 77 for Ohio State. And it was clear to me at least that Ohio State knew this. They knew that Michigan's best strategy was to let them, I tweeted this out, you should follow me, at James Yoder. The strategy of this Michigan over the last four years, it is so clear, right, against Ohio State in 21, 22, maybe not as much as 23, but then again, very clear today. Let them waste time with 
five and six and eight yard passes between the 20s. Then lock down, force them to field goal, show them different looks once you get inside the red zone. And that's exactly what happened again today. And Credit to, to to Wink Martindale. He pulled off the same game plan as years past. Now Michigan didn't, you know, destroy it on the, the yard. They didn't throw for, run for 300 yards or anything like that, like they have, uh, you know, back in 2022, maybe in 2021. But 172 yards, basically 100 yards more than Ohio State. Ohio State knew that. I think they did. And Ohio State fans on Twitter and people texting me, friends of mine, kind of friends, um, what is this play calling? What is this play calling? It was clear that Ohio State knew they had to run the ball to win this game. And maybe they played right into Michigan's hand. I'm not sure, but I think they tried to go against what has lost them the game the last three years, which is throwing for 375 yards, 390 yards, you know, throwing 50 times and getting down inside the 20 and then having to settle for field goals. Michigan forced them to do that early. Uh, Ohio State missed two field goals. And, uh, and you know, that could be the difference of the ball game. But Ohio State fans are going to make a lot of excuses for today. Bad pay calling, bad this, bad that. Fact is, Michigan had the ball inside the five-yard line twice in this game and got zero points and still won without their best player on offense, their co-best player on defense, their starting running back, and uh, they beat Ohio State for the fourth year in a row, the fifth straight season without a loss. And uh, the countdown clock continues, right? It's like 1,800 and some days. It's going to go into the 2000s now as Michigan has beat Ohio State again. If you watched this entire video, so thankful for everyone who's watched the show over the last few years. Thank you for being part of the community. Thank you for being my internet friend in a lot of way. Uh, comment Bosa um, because, I, you know, look, I, I'm not going to say uh, we're responsible for it, but uh, I think this, this movement, uh, you see it all the time on Twitter. You see it all the time in the comments here. Um, I know for a fact that uh, people inside that program have sort of taken this probably you know, a little more seriously when you get pressure like uh, people, like the fan base. Uh, you, me, and plenty of others combined put the pressure. Focus on this game. Win this damn game. And they've done it for the fourth straight year. Beat Ohio State again. Give me some boses down in the comment. Whew, I'm tired. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for the future of this program right now because it is looking bright, baby. Go Blue.